Hey guys, Big Dan Bates here, Bates Photography. I wanted to go through with you today um, a quick and easy HDR workflow for real estate. Um, what you're seeing here is some classic abuse of HDR, and this runs rampant throughout the real estate industry. And I want to say, if you take pictures like this, you won't be in business for long, but unfortunately, I don't know why. Again, this runs rampant in the real estate industry. So I'm going to go through a workflow with you, and it's easy and it's nearly autonomous. Uh, the, doing it in such a way where you're doing your brackets in the field, you come home, you highlight five at a time, and either open them in Photoshop or open them in Lightroom, which is actually doing a much better job than it used to in the past with HDRs. And going through all that, that tedium and sitting there two and a half hours just watching these things process until you can even do the next one is it's just too much so it will cost you a small investment in uh, some sort of a HDR software that's usable for batch processing but it's well worth it uh, for less than one shoot what you get paid for one shoot you can afford that software so um, for this demonstration I personally own um, photomatics there are others I am not pimping out photomatics at all it seemed to work it's worked pretty well for me I don't really have too many complaints um, I think it could do on certain shoots certain properties could do a better job um, but this is what you want to avoid this type of stuff here uh, HDRs if you do in-camera HDR or you just do a bracket and you bring it back and you make an HDR first before doing any white balancing, you're gonna get these real dark oranges in your wood and these green hues. So um, this is another example of an interior, terribly white balanced, just bring them, bringing in the bracket, telling something to do an HDR, uh, terrible. This is actually, um, you see Photomatics, this was actually an example um, from the Photomax website. And then when done properly, it looks more like this. Now to me, this is a little hot, uh, a little, somebody went a little too bright with this development, but this is, you know, unfortunately you're seeing a lot of this on Zillow and they should be looking more like this. So I'm gonna go through my workflow and kind of tell you a little, little bit of story as we go and give you some suggested settings. So the first thing, and I'm, I'm telling you that this is going to be nearly autonomous. So the first thing is you're in the field, you're setting up your brackets. Now, this is just this little cottage I literally just shot. So I'm doing this video as I'm doing the processing um, to give you an honest, true demonstration of my workflow. So they're in here. I actually had already applied my preset. And then I had to reset them all. So even though these have these little things on them down here, they are not actually been processed yet. When I reset them, I sync this reset across them all. So the, for whatever reason, they're still there. But these are all reset back to straight out of camera raw. Now, I do two separate things when I approach a property. And I know I'm going to be shooting HDR. Uh, I shoot the exterior in a specific way and have a specific bracket or a um, preset for that. And I shoot the interior a certain way, and I have a separate interior preset for that. Going in, you want to have a clean formatted hard drive. For my particular process, and you can certainly experiment what works best for yours, um, I, I do a five image bracket with um, one exposure differential. So it's, it's the five images plus one, um, or one EV. And... So I, it fires off five every time. I go into this knowing I'm going to be shooting even the exterior as a bracket, and I'm doing that again for the the autonomy of the process, the the, the let, basically pressing it and forgetting it and letting it work itself. Uh, this enables me the time I have to spend in front of my computer minimal. Uh, I just, I should have did this video with this other house I did. I ended up having to generate almost 58 images. It was such a massive house and had so many rooms. Even doing one shot in every room, I still ended up with nearly 50 images. Um, but, what 
was I saying? Okay, yeah. So we have our the the five shots of five of these. So even when I'm doing the exterior, I still do the bracket so that when I import these and then dump them into my batch processor, the batch processor is going to I'm not going to have to manually select individual files. I'm not going to have to go through and say, okay, do these five and these five, but don't do these five or these five. I don't want to have to do that. I want this to be fully automated. So what I'll do for the exterior, uh, I shoot ISO 100 typically. I think on this particular one, I think it was set at 200 um, just because, yeah, ISO 200, just because I just didn't change it from wherever I was before. Uh, but typically I try to do ISO 100 on the exterior. I do F11 for a good depth of, of field. Nice to make sure everything is nice and clear and crisp. And then uh, I shoot, I have a Zeiss for my Sony camera. I have a, the Zeiss 16 to 35. Um, it'll vary on exterior and interior. I usually shoot between 16 and 20. Uh, but for the camera setup, ISO 100, um, F11, and then I set my exposure. Now the middle frame is where I, is my exposure setting. So in this case, my uh, exposure is at zero. I'm, I'm a neutral exposure. I'm not minus three or minus seven or plus three or plus seven. I set it to a neutral exposure and I shoot the five images. I will let this, again, for, for the automated process of it all, I'll let it process all my exteriors as an HDR. Oftentimes, I don't like the way my exteriors look as an HDR, so I will um, go through back to the original batch here and just pick out the neutral exposure on each shot and process that if the HDRs look too crazy. Um, oftentimes, I can bring them back with just some adjustments. So... For my exteriors, I import them in the Lightroom. So I pop in my card, I tell it to import, walk away. Uh, that shoot that I just came from with the other house that I had over 50 pictures, well, they were close to 300 pictures. By the time you combine the five and the one, and you end up with 50. It was, or it was like 58. It was close to three. I was like. Uh, 290 I think it was photos so that could take a little while for full-size uncompressed raw photos to import even with the new updated Lightroom Classic CC which is what I'm running on so I click the button walk away go make a snack I just got in from shooting all morning whatever go make lunch do whatever I'm going to do let it import done now we're at this stage so I come in here I have two set uh, two setups interior and exterior so for the interior here um, I have, let me do this so you don't get them confused. I can get rid of this guy. Okay. Just so there's no confusion, I, I just wanted to leave these three presets here. So, I have first import exterior, first import interior. I was in New York at the Sony building for a, uh, the Photo Plus Expo. Prior to the Expo, we were at a Sony event um, in the actual Sony building for a couple of days. It was all part of the whole Sony launch of the um, A7R III. And they had artisans in town. And we were at the Sony building with Scott Robert Lim doing some events there. And then we met with Jason Lanier, uh, Lanier later. Um, and I met another real estate photographer there. And he says to me, why would you ever waste your time importing all of those brackets into Lightroom just to balance out your white balance and then export them out, have them to then import them in the photomatics, put them, then re-import them back in the Lightroom. You're wasting so much of your time. Again, this is automated. I'm not wasting any time. I click the button, I walk away. He then showed me some of his pictures and they were as cartoony as the ones I showed you at the beginning of this video. Um, the guy does a ton of work. He works in New York City. He worked, according to him, he works for over 100 realtors, three, four shoots a day. Somehow he's making it with those cartoony shots. I, of course, said, wow, your shots are great. I was very cordial about it. But for somebody who is a relative noob when it comes to HDR and real estate photography and photography in general, 
um, I was shocked at the, the quality that he's giving these realtors and still getting paid and probably paid well for it. Uh, so yes, I will import into Lightroom first and we're gonna go over why right now. So in this preset, um, first import exterior. We're gonna get and apply that to this first image. Now, what's my preset? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm only looking to do a few things here. So I boost my clarity just a little bit. That's plus 12 if you're interested. Of course, do that to your tastes. Uh, detail, I boost my sharpening a little bit. I actually bring up this noise reduction just, just in case for some of the shadowy areas, for especially with the HDR. I like to do my own noise reduction in Lightroom, then let the HDR program decide what areas need noise reduction. Uh, and then as we come down here, of course, lens corrections. If you do not import your raw files into Lightroom or Bridge or something like that first and do the lens correction, when your batch processor, in my case, Photomatic, spits out those JPEGs and you bring it in here and try to do a lens correction, you will not be able to do a proper lens correction. This will be blanked out. When you click this, this is going to say none. You're going to click that, pick, say, for me, Sony. And then the only option it's going to give you is 70 to 200. So always, 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 if you're going to follow this workflow or if you have a similar workflow, always do your lens correction prior to doing your HDRs. So this preset applies the lens correction. And then the only other thing I really have uh, sometimes you get some sun glare or whatever, so by default I have a little 17 dehaze. After the fact, when I'm in my final phase, any of these little things need to be tweaked, picture per picture, I'll, I'll do that, but very seldom do I ever have to. So again, that's dehaze, uh, lens corrections, hate when it does that, um, just a little bit of noise reduction and sharpening and just a little bit of clarity. The biggest key to this is the white balance. For exteriors, as shot is where you want to be. If I switch this to auto, everything's going to get really warm and brown. And remember, with HDRs, we have enough trouble with things looking orange to begin with. Exteriors, as shot. So I have that done. So I'm really taking my time to explain this. This literally would take me three seconds. Now I'm going to come here, find the end of my exteriors. Uh, I don't know why these are displaying like this. There we go. This is on my last exterior here. Shift, click, and sync. Now, interiors. It's a very similar setting. So we here we have first import interior. Now, let's go over to preset. In this case, the white balance has been changed to auto. Um, interiors will typically shoot sometimes dark, sometimes yellowy. Uh, so even with the auto white balance in camera, if I'm not going through and setting it per room with my little white cone or my gray panel, it, it's never right on the interior. It's been my experience. I find it much easier in here for interior, white balance auto is where you need to be. And we can always revisit this after the fact in the secondary post. Okay, come down here, same thing, clarity, I'm up actually 14 for interior. Uh, detail, same thing, I have my noise reduction a little higher, like 39. Uh, this color, all this here, in case you're unsure, when you do have noise, it can be like a multicolored speckle, but if you bring this up, it basically obliterates, it, make, it, it desaturates it. So if there is any, any noise at all, it just appears as green, there's no coloration to it. Now you come down here a little further, of course, our lens corrections. And I have a, just a plus seven for dehaze. Again, sometimes when that sun comes in, you get that kind of a light haze coming through the room, especially if the house is old and dusty. So that little bit helps curb that and just help, uh, helps to crisp everything up. So now with all this done, that's it. I am going to make sure that's still right, just in case I don't think I changed anything, but just in case we're gonna re-hit that. Go to the end of this, shift click, sync. My initial setup is done. 
I have not leveled anything. I have not worried about my verticals at this point. I have literally come in here. I did some minor touch-ups to the, to the photograph itself. And I did a, a, a white balance and a lens correction. The white balance and lens correction are most important. But doing those other couple of things, such as the clarity, the noise reduction, is going to make for a cleaner, nicer HDR in the end. And this is what we're doing this for. Why am I wasting my time with this first import and this first step? One, because it's not costing me any time. And two, it's going to make for a cleaner, whiter, more realistic, true to what it looks like when you're standing in that room, more marketable and more favorable HDR. That's why I go through this step. And in reality, in real life, as long as it takes me to click my, my SD card in and hit import a minute, I come back, it's done. You know, I'll check on it in a half an hour or whatever, make sure it's done, all the previews are built. Uh, I apply exterior presets, interior presets, another minute. I hit export, I walk away. So, we are going to export this. And we're going to put this in a demo folder because these already exist in that pre HDR folder, folder. But I wanted to show you as I was physically doing it. Um, so we're going to do that. Exporting 90 files. It's going to take a little bit. So we'll revisit this back once the folder is complete. And I'm ready to now enter the next phase, which is importing them into our batch HDR processor. Now, I will say this again. I am using Photomatics. Um, it's just no reason. I have no affiliation to them. Uh, I, I want to say it was like 69 bucks or 80 bucks or something. I'm not going to remember for this. And I was taking so long, hours upon hours, having Lightroom do the HDRs and then converting it to a DNG and putting it back. And then I wouldn't always get it right. Um, I wanted something to do batch. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the only reason I settled on this was when I brought it up at the time, uh, a couple months back, it's now beginning of November. This was probably uh, back in July when I, when I first started this. When I did searches and I talked to the guys in my photography group and I speak to some of the, you know, different people on the forums, this tends to be one of the favorites. There are four or five others. Um, that will do your batches and do a very good job. And they're probably all priced right around the same. Uh, if you are doing real estate, I work on the value end. The market where I am by Philadelphia is so flooded. Uh, the only way that I, as the new kid on the block, can get consistent work is to underbid everybody. So uh, I'm charging much less than what most of the real estate uh people in my area charge, which is about 150 I charge uh, 85 for my original clients, and now I'm charging 100 for new clients. Uh, but one photo shoot paid for, for the software, and this has saved me hours upon hours of my time. I work a 40-hour plus week normal job, plus all the photography that I do, real estate, portraits, weddings, engagements, events, product photography, uh, my time is more precious than the 80 some dollars it cost me for this program. So I would highly, highly advise it. If you're doing anything with HDR, invest in a batch processor. So this is working down here, we see. And when it's done, I will be uh, back to complete this video of course for you. It's gonna be a blink of an eye. All right, so Lightroom is finished exporting. So now we are going to go over to Photomatics, which I have loaded up here. And we're going to go to Bracket Photos. And again, it, this is going to be a click and walk away. Select folder. Uh, I know I'm in my photography. I know I'm in real estate. And we are at the demo. It's that simple. I did five shots of every single shot I took that day. They were the only things on the hard drive or the, the um, memory card, the only things in Lightroom, the only things that got exported from Lightroom. It's easy peasy. I have it doing five at a time. There's nothing I have to do. I have this set up just in the categories here. There's all different things. I just simply do natural. Um, 
this here is just to help you break it down architectural realistic but no matter what you do natural is one of their options so I just don't even bother with this um, I just come down to natural uh, and that's it and it's going to put it right in the subfolder of demo I'm going to click run set it and forget it walk away go back out realistically real world um, like I said about a minute to, to import well to set up my more card and click import and walk away uh, I come back and check on it a little bit later once it's all done I have about another three minutes applying my presets and hitting export walk away come back this literally you just saw it took 10 seconds to choose the folder and hit run because once you set this up um, it's just how it's going to be so that's it now I'm going to stop walk away come back when it's done we'll re-import them in the Lightroom and which is the longest part going through just picture to picture doing a, a level uh, or an or auto transform and if need be tweaking a couple of the little brightness settings to get rid of any craziness once we're back in there uh, I got to show you too how I handle any little orangey or greenish hues yellow hues that may be left behind by the process uh, also quick and simple and also built into my preset uh, on the on the return so we'll let this run I'll be right back when it's finished I just wanted to pop back in here real fast this is still running you see it's you know, I'm not even halfway done yet I just started it um, I, guess, I guess I should have touched base on some of my settings in here I, I pointed out about the natural development honestly that's all I do everything else here is I, I tell it to merge five at a time because that's what I shoot if you want to shoot three change it to three uh, this here is just put it in a subfolder of where you've imported them from JPEG 100% I don't need any of these Un, um, unprocessed merged files I really don't need that uh, it comes out as some weird um, HDR file format that does me no good with what I'm doing uh, and then I just again I believe this is all by standard in this software anyway I just do the image alignments um, if need be do, do the cropping Noise reduction and ghost, ghost removal. Now, the noise reduction only does uh, the darker photos, but there should be very little, if any, noise, uh, which is why it, it goes pretty quick when it says apply noise reduction. It just immediately processes right through it. Uh, when you come into more merge settings, I really don't change any of this. Uh, this is all the default because any of, I don't want the HDR software determining where they should lighten a picture or darken a picture or where they should do a color correction or uh, to decide how to um, compensate a shadow. I know that's exactly what I'm asking HDR to do by running this. Uh, maybe I'm using the wrong vernacular there, but it's I want to control the post process of the image. I don't want uh, this to adjust the contrast. I don't want this program to decide on the sharpening. I like to decide all that. Um, noise reduction. Don't waste your time no doing noise reduction on bright photos. They don't have noise. Uh, things like that. Reduce chromatic aberrations. That's checked by default. I wouldn't even have checked that if I was if I even thought about it because I did all that in Lightroom. So it's really um, just about doing this stuff. Uh, all in Lightroom and I'm just using this to combine them and make the the HDR sample um, this part here we're not processing rolls we're processing JPEGs so none of this even applies if I was going straight from the SD card and I didn't want to get my white balances in right I really felt they were good the way they were on a camera um, then here you would do white balance uh, I would probably switch this to auto or you leave it as a shot again because you're going to have to tweak it in the post production anyway. So I just wanted to go through some of these settings. I realized I just kind of skimmed over them, but they may not apply to you. You may not be using Photomatic. So 
Um, but I really just do the minimum. I tell it, I shoot five images, brackets of five, and export it as a JPEG 100%, and just standard stuff, don't do any additional processing. Okay, um, Photomatics has just completed, telling me that my results are in real estate demo, Photomax result zero one. So, get that information, I'm gonna go back to Lightroom, import again. Photography, real estate, demo, photomatic. And we're going to import. Now, some of the photos that are in here, um, there's duplicates of. Sometimes if I am unsure about a room, the way a room is lit, what have you, I will do one either a little lighter or a little darker of an exposure. So sometimes I'll come into a place and I'll have two, sometimes three of the same room, depending on the challenges that I see in that room. Uh, so the exteriors, uh, we're going to quickly just go through these exteriors. I really don't apply any further um, presets to the exterior. I kind of see how it looks. If I do have a... Um, I do have an exterior preset made up. See, sometimes that gets a little too HDR, too contrasty. I tend to leave leave it how it is out of the HDR processing. And if I'm not happy with the HDR, after the fact, in those occasions is where I got to put a little extra work in, go back to the previous import, take that neutral exposure, and then just do a standard development on it, which is basically clicking this exterior preset that I have made. Um, but for the sake of showing you the rooms, which is where it really is most important, we're going to kind of just skip through these. Uh, these all have to be leveled. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll show you that. So here's what I do. Very little. I closed all the panes. I don't need lens corrections now. They're, they've already been done. I am basically opening up my crop. I'm auto leveling and for the interiors I'll even do an auto transform on here the exterior you're not really gonna see a need for that but this is just how fast I, I can get the job done after this I go through I auto level I have a decent tripod and my eyes are still somewhat okay uh, but I, I miss level sometimes depending on the situation the lighting uh, even if my camera says it's level, the, the, the ball head slips a little bit or twists a little bit. And before you know it, you're, you're off. So I go through and I auto level every picture. And every once in a blue moon, like any time you ask a computer to decide something for you, it'll miss and I have to go in and manually tweak it. Uh, but for the most part, short of some minor adjustments here, like on this, I'm able to up the basic, boost up some of these shadows, tweak the contrast, turn down the highlights, bring out that sky a little bit, bring up the lights, and just do a basic exposure like that. But that's just how quickly I can move through these photos now. Now, this was probably one of the worst houses I could have picked to do this HDR demo because the house itself the walls have this bizarre kind of pinkish, beigeish, kind of French thing with bright colored carpets and bright paint. So the house is kind of cartoonish to begin with. Um, but I want to show you what I do here. So I actually have a preset, um, real estate interior post HDR. Now, depending on the exposure, sometimes this comes in a little hot and I will have to the auto leveling. Uh, I will sometimes have to bring this down a skosh um, because it's depending on the exposure comes in a little hot. Uh, but short of that there isn't a whole lot you have to do with this. Now on exteriors I'll do the auto auto uh, level but then I'll do the auto transform and usually that works wonders. Once in a while I'll have to get into a guide it Certain things like bathrooms where your camera angle might be a little pointed down or whatever, I don't even bother with the transformation at all. 
Uh, now this, you're looking at these walls, there's a weird, there's a, again, this is what it actually looked like when I was standing there. But when you have these oranges, and I wanna show you something. Uh, in the hue, saturation, luminance, you come in here by default, I have the orange down by nine or 10. Actually, it used to be like 12. I must have had one where it was washing out the, the woodwork too much. Um, sometimes I'll bring down the yellow or even the green secondarily if I'm having a problem with a particular room. Uh, believe it or not, this is kind of what this room looked like. Uh, this house was a challenge. I had no additional lighting, and oftentimes I won't bring additional lighting um, because I'm using long exposures or the HDRs. Uh, but this this house is particularly shadowy for some reason. I don't know if it was the time of day I was shooting it or, or what was going on. So now this is, again, I did two exposures because I, I felt like that first one may have been a little hot. And in fact, after I post my interior um, post HDR, I, I, it's it's too dark, it's way too shadowy, um, this preset. And again, this preset is constantly evolving. I'll come in here and I'll make some changes to this preset. And if I like the way it looks now, a particular property or what have you, I'll then update my settings with this. So these settings, I'm not even going over because they constantly evolve. But one of the things I wanted to point out was about the, the um, HSL tab about really I mean I, I'll show you here so there is a naturally kind of orange issue to this room but if I drop that orange down you know too much it starts to wash out things you don't want it to wash out but some HDR stuff I mean come in looking like this and the woodwork is just terrible looking so just bringing that orange down a little bit it goes a long way um, so continue now, see somehow I, I was in a, this is a very thick padded carpeting. I got my level set. I stepped to the side. I must have compressed the carpet in a way that I must, whatever. I got a weird thing, but you know, this is where just doing this auto leveling works wonders. Then sometimes what happens when you do the auto leveling it does this thing where it turns the picture and then if you hit auto transform, it maintains the spaces left by the auto leveling, but I just simply take it back and, and it's good. Uh, again, terrible house to show you an HDR tutorial, but what I'm trying to show you for an example is how everything is clean. This house is shadowy, it has some weird reflections, uh, but what I'm trying to show you is, is look at the woodwork. I mean, this is what that piece actually look like when I was standing there. It's not bright orange, it's not has it's not dark green. This is what it actually looked like when I was standing there. Uh, and after this tutorial here, I'll actually do a little slideshow of some of my HDR works in homes that it, it worked better than this particular one. This was just a shoot I did. I had to process it anyway. So I seized the opportunity to to do this. Uh, this wall, if you look even up here, this was painted this color. So that's a little deceiving when you're trying to figure out the HDR. But that dark brown chair was dark brown. It's, uh, you know, it's just how it was. And it's, it's realistic to standing in that room. The room actually looks that bad. Uh, so it, it's kind of how it is. Uh, moving on here, just a couple of different other ones. Like this kitchen was generally that yellow. Now where I was standing, of course, this fridge got a little stretched out even with the um, even with the take that back. Even with the lens adjustments, um, sometimes this will happen. So believe it or not. That was generally that bright yellow. But again, if I feel like it's coming across a little hot, hotter than what it should be, I can simply come in here, drop that yellow down a little bit, make it more realistic. Uh, it was generally that, that bright of a yellow, but if it wasn't, and for some reason the HDR got it wrong, 
this HSL console here, Hue, Saturation, and Luminance, is where it's at. And all I really mess with is the saturation. I drop the yellows or the oranges, and it just fixes it. Um, I'm just skipping around here because I'm just trying to, to show you what I'm doing. Uh, a bathroom, you know. This bathroom, we, we did a, a white balance on it. And through the HR processing, it's got a little of that tint back. But I plot my preset, the orange is a little drop, now it's pure white. Doing that, that before, a, that, that little preset before sending it to HDR makes a world of difference. Um, it, it just does. It's just how it is. Uh, again, really weird shaped house, weird shaped rooms. Uh, but here's an HDR with true to life wood grain, wood colors. They're not orange, they're not green. It's, this is what this would actually look like. And that's that's really what I'm trying to drive home here. You're trying to provide, um, you're trying to provide a true to life image of what this house looks like. You don't wanna do something that over promises and you don't, so definitely don't wanna give something that under promises. You want something to be a realistic example of what you're looking at and uh and that's the whole point of this is if you're going to take these pictures and you're going to be in the real estate business or whatever it is that you're doing and you're trying to create hdrs of interiors you have to have to have to turn in some well i shouldn't say you have to but there's plenty of guys who are doing horrible what is referred to as hdr abuse and getting away with it but it's like anything else you know if, if you tolerate it if you don't set an example, if you don't speak up and make a change, well, then you're saying it's okay. And once everybody or a majority of people agree that something's okay, then it just becomes truth. So it's do yourself a favor, respect yourself and respect your craft enough that you're going to do it right. And I tell you, this is so easy and so fast that if I wasn't making this video, my time in front of this computer uh, import a minute, export uh, three minutes, import into the HDR program a minute, so I'm up to five. Um, back, import back into here and they go through each one of these pictures in real time. Ten minutes, fifteen minutes I'm spending on a development. Sometimes there's challenges and I have to do some special tweaking, but in general, I can get through a nearly fully automated, I keep saying autonomous, I, it may not be the right word. <laughs> I know a lot of big words, but sometimes I get in trouble because in my older age, I sometimes use the wrong word. Uh, but uh, nearly fully automated process. So um, I'm just going to go through these last couple here just in real time to, to basically show you what how I do it. Uh, this last one's actually a terrible picture. I'm not even going to use that one for the actual realtor, but... So here, boom, I come in. Let me close all this down first of all. Auto, auto, preset. Wait for it to process sometimes. I've been doing a lot of stuff in the background here. I'm recording everything else. Sometimes Lightroom has to think about it. I will reclaim the space that I lost. The reason, I'll say this too again, I will be criticized about my added step of the auto leveling before I auto transform. I've had to go back and redo many a picture because if I go straight to auto transform without auto leveling first, every once in a while, depending on the weird angles in the room, like this room has very strange angles, uh, it'll get it horribly wrong. <laughs> and it'll it'll be all like, like giant white streaks coming down here and a giant white streak coming down there. Like somebody uh, just took an eraser or, or some sort of a, it was like printed on rubber and somebody just stretched it out. Sometimes, again, auto will get it wrong. So that extra step, click, click, you're done. It's worth it to get the auto transform uh, more precise. And even that, sometimes, like I said, you have to go through and sometimes do like, look how horribly off this level was. I don't know what, I think I was overwhelmed by the patterns and going into a seizure or something. I don't know how I got this bad off. Um, I'm almost embarrassed to share that picture because that's not like me. I'm very much a, a do it right or do it all type of guy. Um, 
but again, this house was a little wonky too. Uh, so there we did the auto, we did the auto. Because it's so wonky, I'm getting a lot of this lost space I'll reclaim. And apply the preset. And let's see how that comes out. I mean, I can already, oh. Okay, Lightroom's starting to get pissy now because I got so much other things going on in the background. Uh, now, in this one, I would do a little extra processing. This came up a little hot. This came up a little, let me click done so I get those lines off of there. This is very shadowy. So this one, I'd probably pull Yuri, get my little brush out, um, kind of come in here and lighten up this corner a bit. Get a little lightning over here that or I could even do it I could even do this and under the basic panel um, with the way I have this now uh, see I already have these pretty much tweaked from a well, different property I was working on uh, but I could I could really brush this and maybe you know what there's no saving this room regardless so uh, you know I will for the final product you know, I will do some a little touching up in these corners here that are really shadowy bad. I mean, the HDR couldn't even save this window. This the room was so oddly lit. Um, it was very very bright, and all this was pitch black. Uh, there was no lighting in this room. There wasn't even a place to me to to put a light. And like I said, I didn't bring any of my LED stuff with me anyway. Um, but I mean, it is a very I'm, at this point. I feel like I'm just dragging it on here and. I tend to get long-winded in general, and I know it probably bores the crap out of you guys. I hope this was helpful in any any way to, to somebody out there. And um, if it helps you, i got to stop saying um every five seconds as well. If it helps you at all with your process and with, with your you know, getting something done right, getting something done well, where you're showing real-life colors in your HDRs, they're not blown out, not cartoony, not with horrible, weird, wiggly, squiggly edges on everything. Um, you should do it. And in this case, the small investment in that program, uh, I, I recommend it, I guess, because it's the only one I've used and it's worked well for me. I, I know there's other batch processors out there, but I would say, yeah, uh, go for it. Whatever one, do your own research, whatever you decide, go for it. I'm sure they're all good. But really, really consider adopting this workflow. And as big of a shortcut as I've taken with this process, where it's it's set it and forget it. Uh, it it's the the other shortcuts. I I strongly suggest you don't take. Do the initial import in the Lightroom. Get your lens correction, your white balance, your noise reduction. Get all that set in Lightroom. Then export it. Then build your HDRs. That one shortcut will make a huge difference in your final. Um, or that doing that one extra step and not shortcutting it and going straight to the HDR program can very well, depending on the, the weirdness of the property you're shooting, like this one, can make a huge difference in the final HDR outcome. Um, develop some presets. You know, I have stuff here that, that I've taken out of some other things I keep handy, you know, center light, cool light, whatever, but all this stuff I've just kind of worked and developed. And this um, post interior HDR, I, I'm tweaking it for every property and, and saving it. Updating my settings, um, like I said, sometimes for this property, this was coming a little hot. For a, another property I was shooting, it, it wasn't too hot. Um, I, had to, I had to boost it, in fact. But I'll adjust everything, come over here, left click on it, and I'll update with current settings. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, <clears throat> and then, again, hit File, Export. And uh, when I do that, I then put it, so I have a demo, then I'll put it in the, um, the actual property, whatever the actual address was, blah, 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 first Ave, Hamilton, and let it go into its proper folder. Um, then to go one step further, a little bonus thing here, um, for, it's another shortcut that's saving me time it's automating my process and just really helping me out in the long run here. Uh, 
So I'll come into where my final pictures are. And I already actually have, uh, so let's say these for instance. Now I didn't export my tweaked ones, but just for the purpose of showing you guys, I'll highlight these all up. And instead of then running through and creating a separate export batch in Lightroom, uh, I simply have this light image resizer. It used to be called VSO resizer. And prior to that, Windows XP, it was called something else. I've been using the same program since probably the late 90s. I've been through all of its incarnations. This is the most, its most recent one. Uh, there is a free version of this, but there are some limitations. And I think there may be a watermark. I did have to, to pay a small fee to get the, the full size. But I come in here, light image resizer. I let it open it up. I have it. Once you do your settings once, it'll save those settings unless you change them again. And I just have it set for um, what my realtors want as far as what trend and uh, the MLS asks for for dimensions of all the folders. I do an 85% JPEG, uh, 1600 by 1200, uh, you know, maintain aspect ratio, this and that. And then what I do is I'll have this dump right into my real estate folder under a web folder. So I hit process. They ask me, do I want to create the folder? I say yes. I mean, it takes no time at all, and it does a wonderful, wonderful job. One, I, oh, I had one open elsewhere, that's why that skipped. And then now, when I come into, nope, real estate, I have this web folder, and I literally will just drag that back to the folder it came from. So now when I upload this to the realtor, they will have... The web folder, this is all goofy. <laughs> this is, I'm just because of the demo, I keep packing in here. But the original photos, I'll then drop into a print folder and then they have the web folder. So they have both resolutions. And that's just, that is so much faster than me going through and changing all my settings in Lightroom and hitting export and waiting for them to export again. to be downsized from, from the raws. This is so much faster. And again, in the end, if you can produce the same quality work with less effort and less time, it's worth it's worth your effort. So um, I'm going to put up a little slideshow here, uh, just of a few examples of the HDR work that I've accomplished using the bracket settings I talked about, these presets I've talked about, uh, and then uh, photomatics to generate them, bringing them back into Lightroom and so on. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'll just put a few images up here. It won't be too long. So enjoy the little slideshow. Uh, if you don't mind, if you please like the video or subscribe, uh, we have um, a special treat coming up very, very soon. Uh, it's, it'll be well on demand. I can't talk about it yet because it's a surprise, but uh, that'll, be, that'll be one of our next big chapters. All right, so enjoy. Uh, please like, please subscribe if you would do us that honor. If you truly like this video or enjoyed the content or got something from it, there's always new stuff coming up. Uh, new technology we're reviewing or settings or new development techniques between me and my wife there's always some something that we're we're working on so uh, that's it thanks again have a good one enjoy the slideshow